Think about the last time you interacted with your neighbors beyond a casual wave. When was the last time you joined a club, volunteered your time for a cause, or were part of a real community group? For many of us, the answer might be surprisingly revealing. We lead increasingly busy lives, often feeling isolated and disconnected, even while ironically calling hundreds of people our friends online. It may seem like a harmless change in our social patterns, but the gradual decline in genuine community involvement has deeper consequences than we might initially realize. In his influential book, Bowling Alone, American sociologist Robert Putnam sounded the alarm on this trend. He used the seemingly simple image of bowling to illustrate a profound shift. While more people might be bowling today, less and less do so in leagues, as social teams, or as part of a larger community activity. Putnam calls this decline a weakening of social capital, the networks of relationships, the sense of trust, and shared values that form the fabric of a healthy society. Today we'll delve into Putnam's argument, examining what exactly has caused us to bowl alone, exploring the erosion of social bonds and civic participation. We'll also discuss if and how we might be able to reverse this trend and strengthen our communities. Putnam's central metaphor of bowling may initially seem nostalgic for a bygone era of 1950s Americana, yet its significance goes far deeper. Bowling leagues were once widespread examples of social involvement that transcended lines of class or profession. They weren't just about the activity itself, but about the bonds formed, the sense of belonging to something larger than oneself. His concern isn't that people no longer bowl. It's about the decrease in activities indicative of broader social engagement. Think about it as a broader index measuring involvement in all sorts of activities. Are you part of a club, reading group, or sports team? Do you volunteer for a cause you find meaningful? Are you involved in local politics or community decision-making processes? Putnam's research reveals a troubling trend Participation in these areas has decreased significantly over the past several decades. It's a complex issue, but what's clear is that the ties which once bound us together seem to be weakening. This has severe implications. Think of our social capital like an invisible infrastructure supporting our society. When it weakens, things start to break down, not only in obvious ways but also with subtle, insidious effects. Firstly, weakened social capital means an erosion of trust. When we interact less in our communities, we have fewer opportunities to build relationships with our neighbors, understand different perspectives, and develop that essential foundation for a collaborative society. Without trust, it's harder to agree on shared goals or address complex problems as a community. Imagine a neighborhood facing a zoning issue. Without a foundation of trust and familiarity, Residents may be more likely to view each other as adversaries rather than neighbors with potentially common ground. This decline also fuels civic apathy and a retreat from political participation. When we feel disconnected from our neighbors and the institutions that serve our, our communities, we're less likely to care about local elections, community initiatives, or holding those in power accountable. This disengagement has a real-world effect contributing to a feeling that our voices and actions don't matter. Politicians may become less responsive to the needs of their constituents, and local issues can languish without the collective energy of an engaged citizenry. But the consequences aren't limited to politics or the health of our communities. Weakened social capital has profound implications for our mental well-being. Studies show that strong social connections are vital for our emotional health. Isolation and loneliness have been linked with higher rates of depression, anxiety, and even physical health problems. Social connections provide a sense of belonging, purpose, and social support. They can be a buffer against stress and a source of strength during difficult times. Without these connections, we become more vulnerable to mental and physical health issues. It's a vicious cycle. As we withdraw from community involvement and social interaction, social capital erodes further. We become a collection of individuals, each locked in their private worlds, vulnerable and disconnected, a stark opposite of the ideal of a strong, supportive community. Putnam doesn't offer a singular reason for the decline in social capital. Instead, he presents a multifaceted picture where several factors have played a role, creating a powerful force that gradually nudged us 
towards greater isolation. One of the most significant factors is a simple one, time pressure. Our lives are far busier than in past generations. Longer commutes, the pressure to work longer hours to get ahead, and the relentless siren call of our always connected devices, all of these chip away at the time we would have once devoted to hobbies, volunteering, or simply interacting with our neighbors. Technology is another major culprit. Television has long been blamed for replacing active social participation with passive viewing. Now the internet and social media offer yet another lure. While they have the potential to connect us, they also provide tempting distractions and can promote virtual connections at the expense of real-world relationships. We can scroll through news feeds and like pictures of friends but it's a far different kind of engagement from face-to-face -face interactions. Another factor involves changes in our built environment. Suburban sprawl, where neighborhoods stretch on without communal centers, makes those casual, unplanned interactions far less likely. When there's no local cafe to walk to, no central park where neighbors might run into each other, those spontaneous interactions become harder to foster. Furthermore, a general erosion of trust in institutions may have contributed to our reluctance to engage. Scandals, both political and in religious institutions, can breed cynicism. We may be less likely to join organizations or participate in civic activities due to a feeling that our efforts will be futile or that those in power can't be trusted. It's important to note that generational differences can also play a role. Younger generations, growing up with ubiquitous online interaction, may socialize in different ways and have alternative definitions of what constitutes community. This doesn't negate the importance of real-world connections, but highlights that understanding the changes Putnam describes will require a nuanced view. The picture Putnam paints is complex and, at certain points, might feel slightly bleak. But does it mean we're destined for an increasingly isolated future? Not necessarily. Reversing the decline of social capital won't be easy, but awareness is the first step. Part of the solution, Putnam argues, lies in a conscious effort to rebuild our communities, starting from the grassroots level. It's important to acknowledge that there's no single perfect formula for restoring social capital. What works in one community might not be ideal for another. The key lies in local initiatives, driven by the dedication of individuals, residents, activists, community organizations who recognize the importance of connection and are willing to invest time and energy into strengthening their communities. Let's consider a few ideas. Joining or starting a club or a class based on shared interests creates built-in opportunities for interaction. Even something lighthearted like a book club can be a catalyst. Volunteering your time benefits not only the specific cause, but also allows you to work alongside like-minded people, fostering a sense of shared goals and contributions to your community. Even small actions can matter. Organizing a block party, taking the time to get to know your neighbors, or supporting local businesses and initiatives are all valuable. The goal isn't to become a social butterfly overnight, but to consistently make an effort to engage and connect with your community. Additionally, we can think about changes in urban planning. How can we design cities and neighborhoods that encourage interaction rather than promote isolation? Concepts like pedestrian-friendly streets, accessible community gathering spaces, and prioritizing public parks create the structural opportunity for spontaneous encounters and community events. In his book, Bowling Alone, Robert Putnam offers a sobering but also empowering analysis of the changes in our social fabric. Understanding the decline of social capital should be a wake-up call, making us reassess how we live our lives and engage with our communities. We may not be able to recreate the world of 1950s bowling leagues, but we can still consciously choose connection over isolation, participation over apathy, and community over disengagement. Remember, the rebuilding starts at the grassroots level. Each of us has the power in seemingly small but consistent ways to revitalize our communities. It might take effort, it might mean stepping out of our comfort zones, but the rewards, a sense of belonging, increased trust, improved well-being, and a more robust society make it a crucial investment. As you reflect on Putnam's thesis, consider these questions. How engaged are you in your own community? 
Are there any changes, big or small, you'd like to make? How can we balance the undeniable benefits of technology with the equally undeniable need for real-world connection? Are there ways your local environment, your neighborhood, or your town could be made more conducive to fostering community connections? Robert Putnam's work raises more questions than it gives easy answers. It challenges us to look beyond ourselves and actively contribute to the society we want to live in. Let's continue this conversation. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for joining me today. If you found this episode thought-provoking, please like and share it and subscribe for more explorations of important sociological ideas.